Hello and welcome to What's in the Night Sky for December 2021. I'm Hayley and this month there are opportunities to observe all seven planets, the Geminid meteor shower, some spooky eyes on the moon and maybe even a Christmas time comet. Let's begin with our first planet in the collection for this month which is the planet Mars and to be able to see it you need to be getting up quite early in the morning um, it will rise around half past six at the beginning of the month. So I'm going to take us to around 6.45, just move us around to the southeast and you can see Mars just here. And the trick for observing Mars in December is to view it just before the sun rises. Obviously, as the sky is brightening, it will get harder to spot Mars. So if you find a location with a nice flat horizon, go out from around half past six and see if you can catch a glimpse of it. You can see that on the first of the month we've got a very thin crescent moon joining Mars as well and you'll be able to see that on the second and the third as well. So if I just take us to the second and the third you can see how the moon um, moves quite close to Mars at the beginning of the month. If we just have a look how that picture is over the course of the month you can see that Mars is staying quite low um, to the horizon and um, getting quite close to the star, the bright um, red giant star Antares in Scorpius towards the end of the month as well. Um, so a nice early morning opportunity for you to catch a glimpse of the planet Mars in December. Let's have a think about the rest of the planets now. So if we go back to the first of the month again, and I'm going to go into the evening sky or the afternoon sky at around five o'clock. And you can see here that we've got Venus, Saturn and Jupiter all in a line. So um, a really good opportunity at the beginning of the month to see um, these three planets all very close to each other. Um, you need to get out fairly early in the evening if you want to see Venus. Uh, if I move time onwards a bit, you can see that as we get further on into the night, Venus will be setting. So by the time you get to about 6 p.m., Venus will have set, but you can still um, observe Jupiter and Saturn for a while after that. When we look at Venus through a telescope or a pair of binoculars, if you can hold them steady, um, it's really good to be able to try and spot the phase of Venus. So um, in December, Venus will be showing a really beautiful crescent phase. Um, and when we observe Venus through a telescope or a pair of binoculars, the phase is the main thing that we can look for because the Venus itself, the surface, is um, obscured by these huge, thick, reflective clouds um, that hide what's going on on the surface of the planet um, and also heat the planet um, due to the greenhouse effect, which which is why the planet Venus is hotter than the planet Mercury, even though it's further from the sun. Um, so although you won't see any surface features, it's definitely worth training your telescope on Venus if you have one and seeing if you can pick out that phase. Venus will look quite spectacular. Um, Venus is the brightest object in the night sky after the sun and the moon. So always a good one to see if you can catch it at the right time. If we continue to watch this part of the sky over the following days, you can see that when we get to around the 7th, the crescent moon comes to join in as well. So you've got an opportunity there to see Jupiter, Saturn and the moon over the days from the 7th to the 9th, and then the moon will move away. If you want to see Venus, then the time to do it is during the first half of the month. As the month goes on, Venus gets lower and lower and eventually gets lost in the evening twilight. And you'll still be able to see Jupiter and Saturn, but Venus will be a very difficult object um, from the middle of the month onwards. If we move towards the end of the month, so I'm going to go to the 28th now. There are opportunities at the end of the month to collect six planets all in one go. Um, so I said that Venus was a difficult spot towards the second half of the month, but it's not impossible. Um, so if I go down, so I'm just before five o'clock here, so just after sunset, you've got Venus and then Saturn and Jupiter, as we've already talked about. And you can also have a go at spotting Neptune and Uranus um, at the end of the month as well. If we go into the dark part of the night, so we've got Venus, Saturn and Jupiter all setting. And if we look um, near to uh, Pisces the fish, 
Um, so just between Aquarius and Pisces, then you might be able to spot the planet Neptune, um, which is just over here. So um, for Neptune and Uranus, you really need at least a pair of binoculars and preferably a small telescope. Um, and if we go up here to um, towards the constellation of Aries, then you can find um, Uranus as well. And you can look for the, um, if you have a telescope, you can look for the greenish um, hue of the planet as well and see if you can spot that. And finally, you can also have a go at Mars early in the morning, as we um, talked about earlier. Let's leave the planets behind now and have a think about the moon. We've talked in previous months about Claire Obscure effects on the moon, which are these unusual um, effects that you can see that are due to the interplay of light and shadow on the moon. And you have to look for them at just exactly the right time in the lunar cycle. Um, the one I want to talk to you about this month is called the Eyes of Clavius, and that is taking place on the 12th of December. And the best time to observe it is around 20 past 10. So here we are at 20 past 10. Um, on the 12th and you can see that we have the moon in the southwest and it's just about half illuminated and the thing that you need to do to see the eyes of Clavius is to locate the Clavius crater which is one of the biggest craters on the moon and if you have never seen it before then you can try to look for it with a pair of binoculars or a small telescope and you can use the uh, famous Tycho crater to help you locate it. Now um, it's very difficult to see it um, on my image here because it's right on the Terminator, which is where you want it to see the Claire Obscure effect. So I'm just going to take us forward by a couple of days um, just so that I can show you what the Clavius Crater looks like. And then we'll go back to the 12th to see um, the a eyes of Clavius. So um, here you can see that you've got the Tycho crater, so that famous um, crater that has that amazing ray system coming from it. Um, and then if we go down um, to the south, you can locate the Clavius crater. Uh, and the Clavius crater has all these little craterlets inside as well, which you can spot if you have a telescope. Um, so if we go back now to the 12th, um, so you're looking um, to the south of the moon, um, looking for the Clavius crater, see if you can locate it in your binoculars or your telescope, um, and see if you can see a pair of spooky eyes staring back at you from the moon inside the Clavius crater. Um, this should be achievable with a pair of binoculars, certainly with a small telescope. Um, and what you're seeing there is as the sun rises over the crater, the rims of two of its little craterlets, Clavius C and Clavius D, become illuminated and they look like a pair of eyes looking back at you. December brings with it one of the best meteor showers of the year, which is the Geminids. Um, and that peaks at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning on the 14th. So the best time to observe the Geminids are the evenings of the uh, 13th and the 14th of December. So let's go to the 13th. I'm just going to zoom out. And the best time of all to observe is... Um, in the early hours of the morning after about 2 a.m. Um, and that's because the moon will be in the way before that. Um, if that is too late for you, then you can still go out before that and the moon will wash out some of the fainter meteors, but you'll probably still be able to see quite a few. Um, so you are looking for um, Gemini or the radiant of the meteor shower is in the constellation of Gemini, but you don't have to be looking at Gemini. In fact, it's better to look a little bit away from the radiant because if you look directly at the radiant, then the trails of the meteors that you see are smaller. Um, so you can look at any part of the sky that you like. Um, looking at an altitude of about 60 degrees is best, um, but wherever you are, you should be able to see some meteors. The things that are important, as always for meteor showers, are um, a dark sky, as dark as you can, as dark a location as you can, um, and a clear sky, so hope for good weather, and make sure that you wrap yourself up really, really warm, because it will be cold, um, and find yourself somewhere comfortable to sit, so something like a sun lounger or lying on a blanket is a good idea. Um, if I put 
meteor showers on. You can see where the radiant is um, in the constellation of Gemini. And um, this meteor shower has a good hourly rate. So you should be able to see plenty of meteors if you go out for a while um, on the nights of the 13th and the 14th. I decided to do Gemini as our constellation of the month this month as well, since we're already going to be out looking in the region of Gemini for our meteor shower. Um, Gemini is a constellation of the zodiac, which means it's in the area of sky that includes the paths of the sun and the planets, um, and is Latin for twins. And if we put the art on, um, you can see the twins of um, Gemini and the bright stars of Castor and Pollux representing the heads of the twins. Um, so most often associated with um, the twins Castor and Pollux from Greek mythology. But there, as with all the constellations, there are lots of other stories around um, Gemini as well. Um, Pollux is a red giant and has an exoplanet um, and Castor is a binary star and each of its components are also binary so um, Castor is actually a four star system um, and uh, there's another binary a short distance away which is also bound to that system so making it really a six star system so um, although if we look at it with the naked eye we just see one star there's actually six stars um, in the Castor system. Another thing you can look out for if you are out observing the Geminids um, and you're having a look at Gemini as our constellation of the month is the um, open cluster M35. Um, so if you are at a dark site with good vision, then it should be just visible to the naked eye. Um, you might like to have a pair of binoculars to help you. Uh, so it's a large open cluster, looks like a cloud containing... Um, lots of bright stars with binoculars uh, and the best way to locate it is to draw a line from Betelgeuse in Orion to Pollux in Gemini so this line here and that will take you to the brightest star along that line which is Alhina and if you draw a line from that star to Capella which is the brightest star in Auriga and by far the brightest star in that part of the sky so you won't be able to miss it then the cluster M35 appears along that line, just um, near the foot of um, Castor. So if we zoom in a little bit, hopefully we will be able to see it. Um, here we go. So M35, the shoe buckle cluster, because it appears um, at the foot or at the shoe of one of the twins of Gemini. So um, M35, a nice... Um, binocular target if you are out on a nice clear night looking at the constellation of Gemini. Let's finish with Comet Leonard. So it's always really exciting when you think there might be the prospect of a naked eye comet. Um, comet Leonard was discovered at the start of the year and it was hoped that it might become visible to the naked eye in December. Comets are notoriously unpredictable, so we still don't know quite what it's going to do. It looks like it might not become visible to the naked eye, but even if it doesn't, you should still be able to spot it in a pair of binoculars. In the evenings, it will be very, very low to the horizon, so you're not going to be able to spot it in the evening unless it gets pretty bright. Um, the best time to look for it is going to be in the early mornings during the first half of the month and it will be brightening during that first half of the month and it reaches its closest approach to us on the 13th. Um, so I'm going to go back to the beginning of the month and I'm going to go to about five o'clock in the morning and you want to be looking towards the east at the beginning of the month um, and you can see here we've got the constellation of Barotes, the bright red giant star Arcturus, um, and Comet Leonard is just above over here. Um, so have a look for it with your binoculars, and I'm just going to show you um, the path that it will take during the first half of the month. So um, if I move time onwards you can see that it's getting lower come through the constellation of Barotes down towards the horizon um, and then starting to get lost towards the middle of the month. That brings me to the end of what's in the night sky for December 2021 and I'll be back in the new year to tell you what you can see in January. <laughs>